So what's going on guys, DIY Dan here again, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how I put together the outdoor habitat for my new tortoise, Wilma. She is actually a rescue. She was found in Tucson on the side of the road. So they actually took her to the vet where my sister works, and they were trying to find her a home, and I thought it would be a real neat fit for my raised planter in my backyard. So the main things I'm going to go over in this video is how I made her den and how I made a water pond that kind of circulates and flushes itself out every day on its own. And then I'm gonna to lightly touch on a couple of the other things we ended up doing to this habitat as well. So since this video is pretty long, I did do a chapter index to break down what I go over in this video with the times next to it so you can bypass what you don't need to see so I don't waste your time. So if you end up enjoying this video and it gives you some good information, Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. The whole concept of my channel is to give you guys the most information in the least amount of time as possible so I don't waste your time. So let's get to it. So here's the raised planter that I built about eight years ago and I just decided it would be kind of a cool habitat for a tortoise. So the first thing I did was dig out the outer edge so the block wall was the barrier for the tortoise. So I did that all the way around the entire raised planter. One added bonus that this raised planter does have is when I built it, I did do a six inch footer under all these bricks as well. So if she does burrow, she's gotta go down an extra six inches beyond the distance of the brick. So this area of the planter is actually four bricks tall when I built it. The rest of it is only three bricks tall. I have seen her try and scale this wall, but she had little to no success. And if I do see her starting to get the hang of it, I can always add another layer of brick if need be. So the spots that have four bricks are about an 18 inch wall. And with the three bricks, I've got a minimum of 12 inches. So I think that's gonna work out well. One of the first things that I did build was a den for the tortoise. This plastic bin was actually a water weight for a basketball hoop for a pool that I just hung on to because I figured it might come in handy for something. I drilled four holes and then connected the dots with a jigsaw to make the opening so she could get into the den. I did leave a little bit of a lip on the bottom as a water barrier. Right here, I'm just starting to dig out where I was gonna place the den. I wanted to bury the back end of the den a lot deeper than the front because the lower in the dirt that it is, the better insulation it has and the warmer it's gonna keep in the winter and the cooler it's gonna keep in the summer. So far, the only downside I see to possibly using this plastic bin for the den is that if she goes all the way in that back corner, it is quite a stretch for me to reach in and grab her if I need to. Now, one mistake I did make is I actually filled the inside of this den before making sure that I was happy with the end result. And I ended up moving it because I did not like how close my bricks were coming to the outer wall. And I figured that was gonna just fill up with dirt too fast and give her a platform to possibly scale the wall. So I ended up moving this whole thing after putting it all together and relocating it to another part in the enclosure. Before moving it, I actually tried just lifting the front end more and putting a little steeper of an angle on the den. And I ended up cutting the hole a little bigger with the jigsaw, trying to make it work before making the final decision to move it. There was quite a bit of trial and error involved in putting this den together, but I ended up happy with the end result. All these bricks that I'm using for the entrance, I had left over from another raised planter that we used to have that we tore down. I did put some bricks underneath the front entrance in case she starts digging away at that as she goes in and out. So there is a sturdy base underneath that will never wash out. So right now we do have it blocked off so she can't get in there because we still bring her in at night because it's still a little too cold out. And I didn't want to have to fight getting her out of there to bring her in every night. So the other main thing I ended up building for this habitat was a water pond so she could bathe during the summer when it's over 122 degrees in Phoenix, Arizona. So I actually had two attempts at this. My first one, I actually liked the way it came out better than the second. However, I didn't let the concrete cure long enough and it ended up cracking when I was trying to move it. So the concept of this water pond that I built was to, instead of just watering the trees, let the water go into the pond and then put a drain so it automatically drains off and waters the trees. So I thought this idea was pretty cool because then it kind of automatically flushes and changes the water 
every time that I water my trees. I was able to get a small piece of six inch wire mesh to use as a reinforcement for the base from my work. I ended up doing a double layer of that wire mesh, then using a pair of needle nose and some tie wire, I tied the two pieces together and bent the outer edge to form the shape of the pond. So I bought one of the better concrete mixes that Lowe's had because usually it comes with smaller rocks and I wanted a high tensile strength because I was going to be moving it around. I also bought some concrete color because I wanted to look as natural as possible. And you can get various colors of that on Amazon. So I pre-mixed my concrete, you dump the powder in there and just mix it all up good. I actually ended up doing a pretty wet mixture on mine because I figured with what I was doing that was going to be the better way to go. However, I ended up having to keep finishing the concrete because it was kind of falling off. So maybe a little drier mix would have been better. The concept of that tie wire is that you want it about halfway in that bottom layer of concrete. So there's concrete above it and below it. I just shimmied the tie wire up a little bit after laying the concrete down a couple times. You could also put just a little bit of a spacer with some tie wire or something like that to hold it up a little bit. For the drain, I grabbed a piece of one inch PVC and that was kind of a tricky part is trying to figure out how much of a water level I wanted in the pond before it would drain off. So the end result ended up being about a five eighths to three quarters inch layer of water once it drains off in this pond. And if I had it to do over again, I probably would have put it closer to an inch. I tapered the edges on the inside and the outside of this pond to make it easier for Wilma to get in and out of it. There was some patience involved in doing this. One, because of the wet concrete and it kept slumping off like I was telling you earlier. So it did take me about 45 minutes to keep manipulating this concrete until it was dry enough to stand on its own. I wanted to leave a rough edge, one for a more natural look, and the other is to give Wilma a better gripping surface, once again to help her easily get in and out of it as she wants. I ran my three fingers along the whole inside edge of the pond to give her kind of a ladder to help her get out. So on my second attempt, I actually let it cure for an entire week instead of just a day and a half, and this thing did not crack at all when I went to move it. I used a wheelbarrow to move it into my backyard and then just slid it off using one of my ramps for one of my trailers. So I ended up putting this under the tree that sheds the most leaves. Not the smartest thing to do on my behalf. Using a rake, I loosened up the dirt underneath where I wanted to put the pond and then I just started playing with it, adding some water, moving some dirt around and seeing how it would drain off. Once getting it draining the way I wanted it, I just used the rake to move some dirt around it to give it a finished look. The other thing I would have done differently on this pond is actually putting the threaded part of the PVC that I used for the drain on the inside so I could actually thread a screen on to the inside of the pond because I have had the leaves from that tree clog up the drain a couple times. So if I was to do it again, I would have put a one inch female pipe thread on the PVC going into the pond and gotten a screen like this because I could unthread it, clean it off, and it wouldn't get clogged as much. So right here you can see instead of running my sprinkler lines directly to the tree, I ran them into the pond and then the pond waters the tree. We also added some driftwood, some boulders, and some plants to add to the habitat. We did put some of them in pots, so therefore once they grow and start overhanging, she can eat the leaves off of it, but not be able to actually destroy the entire plant. And one other thing I forgot to mention is because our raised planter was like a two-part section, right now I pulled the bricks out that were between the two sections, but if I end up getting another tortoise and they're not getting along for whatever reason, I could put those bricks back and separate them if I absolutely needed to. So that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it and it gave you some good information or ideas that you can use to build an outdoor habitat for your tortoise. If you did enjoy this, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. The whole concept of my channel is to give you guys the most information in the least amount of time as possible so I don't waste your time. My channel is loaded with all kinds of different DIYs, all with the same concept. Save you guys money by doing it yourselves. Hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Later.